Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Thursday the 19th of March 2020 and earlier today, before markets opened, we published a video entitled US Dollar is King as ECB Increases QE. Now in this video we covered the fact that the European Central Bank met last night and announced a series of quantitative easing measures which effectively has injected a further 750 billion euros or the equivalent of 820 billion dollars into the European economy via a mixture of measures and this is in addition to its existing 20 billion euro monthly bond buying program and an announcement last Thursday to inject another 120 billion euros into the system. We also highlighted in that video that the dollar index had exceeded the 100 level and at the time of production the spot index then stood at 101.37. We also articulated that countries such as Australia has seen its currency fall against the dollar to its lowest level since 2002. Similarly, the Indonesian rupiah has fallen against the dollar to its lowest levels since 1998 and the British pound has fallen to its lowest level against the dollar for some 35 years. Now we're writing this video podcast at 1200 hours GMT and currently equity markets in the UK and Europe are mixed but generally down by up to 1%. Crude prices have recovered a little today after this week's smackdown but are still at previously almost unimaginable levels of $26.30 for Brent crude and $22.89 for WTI crude. Now the dollar index, even since our last reporting, has continued to strengthen and the spot index has risen now to 101.96. That's up 0.6. Gold has fallen a little further and now stands at 1472. And silver is down from $12 as it was to its current $11.97. So a marginal drop there. Providing a gold to silver ratio of 123 to 1. Now the purpose of this video though is a continuation of our earlier one. As we have received already two emails from subscribers asking what are the likely ramifications of this strong dollar on other countries' economies and who is likely to be hardest hit. Now, the US dollar, being the world's global currency, is so integrated with almost every economy now, its rise or fall has repercussions on each one. That said, those likely to be the hardest hit by a rising dollar are those holding large quantities of US dollar debt. And this is particularly acute with regard to emerging markets because arguably they will be the least likely to be able to repay it. They have a very difficult balance to maintain. The dilemma for their central banks is to be able to cut interest rates to support growth while at the same time not to cut them so far that they destabilize their own currencies. In fact, we came across a quote from Mitul Kutecha, or Kuteka, depending how one pronounces it, Senior Emerging Market Strategist at TD Securities in Singapore. And this is what Mitul said, quote, the surge in the dollar is another blow to emerging markets. The demand for the dollar has outweighed any hit to the US currency from sharply lower Fed rates. Emerging market assets will continue to struggle as investors steer clear of relatively risky assets and maintain a bias for safe havens. Now this supports the quote we gave in our earlier video by Oriano Lisa sales trader at CMC Markets PLC in Singapore who summed it up remarkably well this morning. We'll remind you of her quote. No asset class is safe right now from being sold to get your hands on dollars. 
Normal market mechanics have disintegrated. I don't see any stop to this for some time yet with liquidity crunch worries in markets. It's a case of sell everything you can to get the mighty dollar. It's the ultimate haven, unquote. Now, further supporting this concern, it has just been reported that new research from the Bank for International Settlements shows that since the global financial crisis, unexpected dollar appreciation depresses world trade growth. A reason for this could be a tightening in financial conditions as dollar lending to emerging markets slows, according to the research paper. Further, all emerging market currencies tracked by Bloomberg have weakened against the dollar since the 20th of January, with the Russian ruble and Mexican peso dropping by almost 20%. Asia, including Indonesia, South Korea and India, are also affected, with India's rupee slumping to a record low last week. So these countries have a tricky balancing act to perform, deploying rate cuts while at the same time maintaining a degree of currency management. The higher the dollar becomes, and the lower their currency in comparison, the more expensive it becomes for them to repay the dollar debt that they have acquired over the years. Now what, of course, everyone fears, or certainly every banker fears, but also politicians too, is default. Especially if one or two of these occur, a domino effect would then be likely. And it is this that would completely unravel the global financial system. Now today, Indonesia and the Philippines are expected to cut rates, with a larger cut expected from the Philippines. It is anticipated that it will be well in excess of a half percent. Now, financial victims also rest outside emerging markets. We've already mentioned Australia with its currency fall, and the concern here are the consequential rise in import costs, which will result without the ability now for Australia to take advantage of foreign currency coming into the country from tourism and inbound education. So, we have emerging markets suffering, countries' costs of imports suffering, with restrictions on their ability to offset these, and in addition, any country reliant on offshore dollar funding, which have floating exchange rates, are also in line for a financial shock. Now, it's worth turning our attention to the impact of this ever-rising dollar on the United States itself. Undoubtedly, a strong dollar helps import prices, as they become relatively cheaper, providing, of course, no additional tariffs have been added. It also helps those Americans touring overseas, as their currency is stronger than the country they are visiting, though we suspect not too many people will be taking advantage of this right now. Also, a strong dollar helps multinationals that do business in the United States. They receive their income from sales in US dollar terms, and when converted to their respective currencies, they witness a currency exchange gain. The dollar's status as a world reserve currency is also bolstered, especially with regards to commodities, all of which are currently priced in US dollar terms across the globe. However, there are downsides. Namely, exports become more expensive and so volumes suffer. Not ideal when one is entering a global recession. Inward tourism suffers as the US becomes more expensive, but again, that does not matter right now. Also, companies conducting business abroad are hurt from receiving their sales income in, say, sterling or euros, and then losing out on the conversion back to dollars. So, as you can see, there are disadvantages. 
further, and this becomes more technical, the ability to sell dollar-denominated debt overseas also on times becomes more difficult as bond and other debt instruments proportionately become more expensive. And if there is a rising dollar, the fear that those countries will be unable to repay that debt increases. Where the balance of all this lies, of course, depends on the geopolitical and economic situation at the time. In times of recession, one will see most countries trying to cut their rates to generate sales income, but if they are all doing this at the same time which they are, they will tend to negate the benefits of the move in the first place. For those in the United States, a strong dollar also has a headwind effect on precious metal prices, for example. Not always, but usually, and this is why, to a large extent, we are seeing very little movement in gold, whereby one would expect to see its price rise well beyond the $1,500 level, let alone resting at around 1470 Silver, unfortunately, is still likely to be one of the hardest hit, as we are not convinced that its fall is as yet over, and certainly not until we fully appreciate the downward effect on industrial demand. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Plus, not forgetting the Richard and Greg channel, and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.